In this video, I want to take a look at how we can create some post effects using compositing nodes here inside of Blender. Now I'm going to be using the sand material that I showcased in a previous video, but before we get started, I want to take a look at some changes I made to the shader network. So first I want to give a shout out to uh, one of my viewers who let me know in the comments that this color space setting for normal needs to be set to non-color. So in my previous video, I had this incorrectly set to linear. And so non-color is the way to go. I did some more research on this and uh, you should use non-color for all of the textures that are going to represent data. And like I said, my previous video, I had set these to linear. So I'm new to Blender, learning this as I go, but I really appreciate uh, the comment and the feedback on the videos. That was extremely helpful tip. Okay, so uh, moving forward, I also want to just showcase a little bit of change I did. So I added just a little bit of, uh, of a subsurface effect here to the sand. And you can see that I have this mask. This was also created in Substance Designer. And then I've been driving it by this color ramp. I really like this node. It's great for pre-processing uh, some of these values as we, sh as we hook those here into the material. And so with this ramp, you can see that I can make some uh, just quick changes here right in the node editor without having to like, you know, jump back over over to a uh, substance designer or any other tool, uh, I can just do that right here in Blender, which is pretty nice. Now I also want to take a look at what I did for this subsurface mask in designer. So here I am in designer and you can see that this is actually going to be quite uh, simple. So if we take a look, uh, you can see that uh, this here is the height map that I have for the, the sand itself. And then here I have this blend node that represents uh, some of this debris that I have, like the pebbles and, and things like that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking in this blend node, you can see that I have uh, basically kind of the, the rocks and some of that sand grain and then some of this debris here. I'm combining those guys together. However, if we take a look, those uh, are also being multiplied over. If we take a look, they're also being, um, excuse me, I'm also taking the sand and subtracting that from them here and you can see that here. So again, what you end up getting, if we take a look way down here towards the bottom, uh, you can see that uh, this gives me that debris. I just run a levels on that and invert it so that I can basically remove that from the subsurface. That's the whole, that's the whole point here. I don't want any of this debris to actually be affected uh, by the subsurface. And then here, I have a levels on my sand. I run that through a blend where I multiply that debris back down. And then I essentially just export this out as a mask. So this is what we're getting here. Like I said, I brought that here into my node editor, process that with a color ramp, and then I send this uh, data over here to uh, my subsurface input of my principled BSDF material. So I also set a subsurface color here for the sand, and then we also have this radius. So the radius represents the average distance that light scatters below the surface. So a higher radius value uh, gives a softer appearance as light bleeds into shadows and through the object. The scattering distance is broken up into these RGB channels, and these RGB channels represent the X, Y, and Z data. And this is nice because it gives us more control to adequately represent various types of materials. Like, for example, if we look at skin, we can see that uh, red light scatters deeper in skin, and if we want, we can come over and we can just give this uh, red channel just a higher value. So we can, again, like I said, have more control over adequately representing certain types of materials. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it of all I really wanted to cover when it comes here to this shader network. So what I've done, I've set these changes, uh, I've done a render here, and then we're gonna jump over to the compositing tab where I have my render layer. So if you're new to this, uh, you wanna make sure to start, say you first come over to this compositing tab, you, you, I think you'll probably see just a blank slate here. You wanna enable this use nodes, uh, and that'll show here a render layer, and then it'll also output this to a little composite node. Now what we wanna do is we wanna create a viewer node. So if you hit Shift A, you can see here that you have your output, this is that composite node, and then you also have this viewer. So a keyboard shortcut for this, if I hold down shift and control and then left click on this out on an output, let's just say image, you can see that it produces that viewer control for me. So with this viewer selected over here at the top, if I enable this backdrop, so this viewer allows us to, well, view our render. We can move it around, we can scale it. So here, if I actually just wanna scale this down a little bit, just to give myself some more kind of workspace room here, uh, then I can start to do my composite uh, right in this space, again, as I'm viewing my render. Now, something else for my render layer, you can see I have image, alpha, depth, and mist. Now, I just also want to come over here to my render layers and just uh, let you know that for this render that I did, I had this mist pass enabled. 
And so now if I hold down again, shift control and then left click on the missed pass, you can see it automatically just connects that into the viewer. And this is uh, what that pass looks like. So I'm gonna use this pass to build up some atmospheric perspective here to my render. So let's, uh, let's start here with uh, the image and let's get to work. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit shift A and I'm gonna come over here to my converter and I'm gonna create this color ramp. Like I said, I'm really loving this color ramp. So then I'm going to uh, take my mist and just pipe that here into the input. Uh, and then let's take our image and let's throw that out here to the, the viewer. This is the result of the color ramp. Now you can see that I could just use the sliders here to basically remap the values that are coming in from my mist pass. So here you can see what we're gonna get. So if we grab the black value and we just kind of slide this up, you can see that we can start to change this overall effect here. Uh, we can also come in here to the, the white value and we can also make some changes to this as well. So uh, another thing we can do with this, we can also lessen the effect by just simply uh, lowering this uh, value range or we can even tint the color, which is what we'll do. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and actually do a composite here uh, of the result of this color ramp to our image. And to do that, we are going to use a node. So I'll hit Shift A and we're gonna come over to color and I'm gonna grab a mix node here. So let's take the result of our color ramp and plug that into the image. And then let's just take the original image output from our render layer and plug that in here. Now for the blending mode, uh, let's try just setting this to add. And then let's take the result here and plug that into the image viewer. So already you can start to see uh, the result that we're getting. Uh, again, the idea here was just to kind of build up uh, a bit of atmospheric perspective. And then, like I said, what's really cool is we can use our color ramp here to uh, really, uh, you know, pr to process those value ranges. So, for example, if we want to lessen that effect or kind of push that back into space, we can do so. Now, also, like I said, I can come over here and I can select this uh, point or this key value. So I'm going to tent this with a, you know, a little bit of a warm color value like this. And then, like I said, if I want to lessen this effect, all I need to do is just lower the, uh, the actual value of it so I can do something like this. So what we get is just, you know, maybe a little bit of a haze look. It's, it's very subtle, but uh, again, it's, it really goes a long way to help establish some of this atmospheric perspective that I'm looking for. And again, it's really cool that we can use this color ramp to just play with these values and, and work with this all in real time, as you can see I'm doing here. So I can just really see the, the results. I can come back here to that black value. Let's just lift that slightly. All right, so we've added this effect in. The next thing that I want to do is I want to introduce uh, a bit of uh, depth of field and some bokeh effects. And so uh, there's a really great node for doing this. So if I hit Shift A and I come over here to my search, and I'm going to do a search for defocus, and uh, we're going to use this defocus node. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the result of our color ramp here, and I'm just going to throw this uh, here into uh, the Z input. Let's just position this defocus node kind of here in the stream of my network, and I'm going to take the result, uh, the image output of this ad, and we're going to plug that into the image. And then finally, let's take the image and just plug that into the viewer like you see here. All right, so this is gonna be uh, basically the node uh, network that I'm gonna be working with. Now, what I can do is I can start to play around the Z scale. So you can see that as I start to increase this Z scale value, here in the back, we start to see a little, of this, a little bit more of this defocus effect. Uh, I can also increase this max blur. And then I can also is come back to my ramp value and start to play around with this as well. So now you can see that we have our depth of field effect. Let's change the bokeh type Two, I'm going to use this hexagonal. Now it looks, uh, we see a lot of stippling here. This looks low quality, and that's because by default it's, it's uh, set here into preview mode. So if I just uncheck this, now you can see we get this really nice high quality uh, view. We can also enable gamma correction, and with that processing we can start to see these highlights uh, quite a bit more. Again, here I'm just going to play around with my Z scale. And there we go, you can see that we've added a little bit of atmospheric perspective. Then we added some depth of field with some nice bokeh effects. We, we did it all right here in Blender using the compositing nodes with a nice quick post-process workflow. It's really easy to work with and it goes a long way to taking your renders to that next level. I really love that I'm able to do this just right here inside of Blender without having to jump out to any other compositing tools. And also because I'm here in Blender, I can easily just jump back to uh, you know my shader, I can make changes, I can re-render, -re and the render will update here in the render layers and then just pass through my node structure. So again, you're just working all in this single environment and you can make changes pretty rapidly. So that's going to close out this video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.